them for sex, slaves, and the world does nothing. You say, where is God? Yeah, exactly. When you see, when you see fanatical Muslims in Israel breaking into houses of Jews and stabbing mothers in front of their children, beautiful mothers, God-fearing mothers who pray every day, you say, where is God, right? Yes, and then you, last week you had the story about uh, the Jewish man that uh, uh, um, uh, Oh, the one who survived, had his family killed in the Holocaust. They put him into a labor camps. He came out in 1947, and he started his life all over again. He's now the oldest man on earth. He's 113. And he said the reason he's alive is because of God. That's what you're asking me, right? Yes, and then how could he, I mean, how could he do it, looking at all the horror that... Uh, I don't know. See, I don't know. See, this is the truth. I guess you have to be somewhat simplistic. And that's where the word faith comes in. And that's where the word belief comes in. I mean, it's blind faith. And you can't question it, you can't doubt it, because once you become skeptical about the existence of God, when you try to rationalize it, how do you explain a school bus full of Christian children going off a cliff with everyone dying in the school bus? What, God did that? I came to terms with this 25 years ago. I'll tell you very simply. You ready for this? Write it down. God is not omnipotent. God is omnipresent. And that's what enabled me to both believe in God and believe in chance. He does not control everything that happens on the earth every moment, but he does exist. It's sort of like a guy who create uh, like a, it's sort of like um, creating something and then walking away from it, letting it run its, on its own merits, and maybe intervening once in a while if someone really reaches out to him. Th that's how I see it. He certainly doesn't talk to every man every second and give every man guidance and protect them. I don't believe that. Do you? No. <laughs> He doesn't do that for me. But I'll tell you this. I will tell you this. As I said that to you, I got frightened that God heard me and he was going to punish me. See, so shows you that as rational as I am and as educated as I am and as mature I am in years, I still carry with me this almost blind faith in a, in a greater being. And I can't explain it to you. I can't explain it to you, but I wish you well in your problems. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. It is the Savage Nation. Did you see Hillary's coughing fit? Well, what, why is that a news story, Hillary's coughing fit? I don't understand why that's a story. What implications? Her health is bad. Her politics are bad. They're old. They're not for our time. Whatever they were, they're not for our time. That's all. She should retire and be the good grandmother that I know she is. And he should retire and open... I think that there's room for Sanders. I hear that there's a, a waiter's position in Katz's Delicatessen in New York. All the old Jewish guys died off except him. He's still around. And it's been replaced by immigrants who work in a Jewish deli. They can't find an authentic deli man. So when he loses and goes down in flames as a laughing stock, he is. I don't know. I'd put him behind either the French fry area. Maybe he'd like to carve up a roast beef or a, a, a corned beef. He could be at the front giving out the tickets and kibitz people. That's where he belongs. A kibitz are at the front of a deli giving out toothpicks after you eat and then grabbing you by the lapel and giving you communist philosophy as they have done in the Lower East Side for the last 50 years. That's Bernie Sanders, but this country is so sick in the head with so many stupid people, mainly in Hollywood. Hollywood, they're voting for, they love Bernie Sanders. You hear this? Why? They, they pay what? They want to pay more taxes and they want to be subjected to more bombings? What? What sense do they make? Well, they don't. That's why they're actors. They pretend that they're heroes. They make believe they're strong men and strong women. They're excellent at it. That's why we watch them. I love watching them. But they're empty shells. They do what the directors tell them to do. And now they're reading scripts about politics given to them by George Soros's minions. News, views, and reviews in return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7287. Sam Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. That's for all of you who didn't get enough of the uh, blue up in your day. Now you have a walk or a book or a tunnel. And you remember your heyday, back in those finished basements in between. You know, but love can come to you at any time in your life. Rupert Murdoch got remarried at age 88. Can you imagine that? How does that work? What's with these media people? What's the guy, Winehouse or whatever, who runs? The guy who's like a 97,000 years old and lives in Beverly Hills with a wife that they were investigating, Sheldon Newman. I don't remember his name. Red, Redstone, Redstone. Some the Redstone. Some the Redstone. Some the Red. They don't stop. They never die. God bless them. And they still have a sex drive. This is amazing, the human condition. But when you think about it, it's a good thing. Sex drive is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. Why? Well, ask any doctor. He'll tell you that if an older person has a sex drive, that means they're healthy and they're going to live longer. They have a reason to get up in the morning. They don't want to just look at the, he the headlines. <laughs> they want to, what a guy wants to have a romance or a woman wants to look in the mirror and feel good about herself, Right? Put on nice clothes for someone. What's wrong with that? You, what do you want to become, like a crazy person that all sex is bad? Which brings us to Hillary suffers massive coughing fit. Now, I don't know if it's related to what I'm saying, but in a certain crazy way it is. Clinton may be unable to finish remarks. Top of drudge. It's a sad thing, I mean, to watch. But look, if you had a husband like Bill Clinton, you could fill in any way you want the rest of that paragraph. You'd also be coughing and running for the presidency. <laughs> Democrat frontrunner Hillary Clinton on a coughing good on Monday will do little to quell rumors that the former U.S. Secretary of State is in poor health. The 68-year-old grandmother had to stop a speech in West Des Moines to try and compose herself for after a hacking attack. <clears throat> Amy Chozik of the New York Times said on Twitter, Hillary Clinton has coughing attack at West Des Moines event may be unable to finish remarks. Big deal. Clinton's health has been a question of speculation since her last coughing fit before the House Select Committee on Benghazi. Media titan Matt Drudge called Clinton's apparent health issues the biggest revelation of the Benghazi hearings. Drudge tweeted, Hillary health was biggest revelation of the hearing. Coughing fit. Slow speaking. Obviously induced by meds. Choose not to believe if you must. Drudge tweeted. The former first lady also sustained a concussion. After falling inside her home in December 2012, she was given blood thinners for a blood clot in her head and returned to work January 7, 2013. Okay, you get the picture. We're not laughing about her health. But what is impelling this woman to run for office with this kind of obvious undertone going on here? What, what's impelling this woman to run? Well, she's losing to a commie from New York, a low-life street agitator named Bernie Sanders. That's enough to get anyone to fight. I mean, you know, nobody wants to go out off the stage of life when they're on the bottom. They want to go off on the top, right? I mean, she's losing to a low-life university pickle manufacturer type, a spritzer, a commie spritzer. It's a hard pill to swallow. And secondly, look, the, the email thing is hanging over her head. You know, you talk about stress. She knows that she can only push that away so long. She has the nerve to say the Inspector General of the United States is part of a vast right-wing conspiracy, that her emails contain such secret information that senior lawmakers are not, a look, not allowed to look at them. Okay? So the fact is, is that she's got all this weighing in her mind that night, and it's affecting her health, and if she was smart, she'd, re she'd get off the stage. Hey, if I reach that point... <laughs> if I reached the point where every two minutes I was coughing on the air or whatever, I would quit. I'd say, I'm sorry, my health doesn't permit it. Uh, I'm taking my doctor's advice. From now on, I'll just tweet. You'll be ca following me on Tweeterberg. I'll go to Tweeterberg's face page, and I'll tweet to you. But no, I'm not. You have a certain point. You, you, you give it up, man. You just let it go. Just let it go, but she won't let it go. There's a madness here. Power madness knows no, no bounds. 
So there it is. Criminal indictment for the server felonies may be behind it. Why is she hacking? Maybe she's sick. Or maybe she told the truth and she coughed. They used to say people sneeze on the truth when I was a kid. I don't know where that came from. You know, the folk tales. Maybe in her case, she coughs on the truth when she called Bernie Sanders or whatever. WABC Steve, all right, Hillary's coughing. Why does it matter? Go ahead, please. Well, the first Steve. thing I mentioned is about her possibly taking medication, as you gathered, that might cause the cough. There's Ramipril and other medications that are used for high blood pressure and so on, so it may be a sign of that. But I wanted to call you about a much more important issue that you raised, which may turn out to be the most important issue in the campaign, and which I think could be the, uh, the key to understanding what's going on with, with Muslims. And that is, I wanted to suggest to you the idea, because you've already been talking about inbreeding among Muslims, that there is a, what I'm calling the M gene. It's a sociopathy gene that is characteristic not only of Muslims, but which involves a certain amount of assortative mating, part of which is your concept of inter you know, uh, inbreeding. Amongst Let's Muslims. back it up for a minute. The, it's well known that there's a lot of marriage of cousins in uh, the Muslim world. It's well known, especially in the tribal world and the more primitive world. Marriage of first cousins. And we also know that the closer you marry within your bloodline, the higher the risk is of, of genetic damage. That's a, a medical fact. Exactly. Are you still, are you still there, doctor? Absolutely. Um, all right. So, what more do we need to say without, without moving into an area where we're going to all sound like like you know cracker racists? I mean, what's your point? You're going to prevent them from marrying. The bigger issue is why are we bringing them in from Syria when they can't vet them? Why are we bringing them from Syria when we read that ISIS has a passport manufacturing machine that can make U.S. passports look like they're issued by the U.S. government? What sane nation would let them come in here? Absolutely, Michael. But I want you to call your attention to the fact that there's a, among Muslims an extremely high proportion that I believe have the M gene, the sociopathy gene. But we find among other populations, among blacks, a large number who are... Oh, now, now you're going to go down the racist road. All Muslims, all blacks are, are, are bad. Right? That's what you're trying to get at to get me in trouble. No, there are, there are Hispanics and there are Jews, there are among every Are there any white people who have this gene or it's only them? No, no, it's it, white people as well. There's sociopathy. Oh, I'm glad you added that. Thank you for putting it in as a footnote. I'm, I'm glad you added it because I do, I do appreciate my radio career. No, I'm, I'm not saying that it's exclusive to Muslims. I, this is like white supremacist radio, your call. I mean, it's like KKK radio, what you just said. I think it's as high as 40 to 50 percent of the white population as well has... Oh, well, thank you for adding that as another footnote. You could have put it at the top of the list. So what do we do about that? What, the government now decides who can have a child? Well, no. If it is... A well, no, you don't marry relatives. That's all. You prevent the marriage of first cousins. Whether they're a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew, you cannot marry a first cousin. But now what, you're going to start marrying daughters next? It could be a hopeful thing. In other words, if we can discover what the gene is that's responsible for sociopathy, we could have potentially a cure for what afflicts. Um, oh, come on. It could be French fries for all I know. Who knows? The gene, the shmeen. We didn't have these problems in America when we had a sane immigration policy. It existed to such an infinitesimal, minimal point that we didn't even worry about it. When I got married so many years ago, I had, in New York, I had to take a Wasserman test. Do you remember what that is? Yes, yes. It's for syphilis. Right. Now, why would they have required in the health department that you took a test to make sure you had no syphilis? Because they didn't want you producing children who were damaged, right? Now, what is that considered? Some kind of violation of civil rights? That two syphilitics are allowed to marry in New York now? Yeah, it wasn't, but, you know, right now we have a large range of other disease. For disease. Of course, of course. You want me to talk about immigrants and epidemics right now? I'd be glad to do it. About all of the, the viruses that are emerging in the country as a result of Obama's open-door policy. The main